Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our praise service. Do we have some announcements, Kevin? A few announcements. Uh, I like before we get started. The praise team and choir practices resume this week. Uh, Bible study for the family continues next week. That's effective parenting in a defective world. At the entrances to the church, if you haven't already picked up this gift from our parish nurse, go ahead and do so. It's a pocket calendar with all kinds of health tips and spaces for you to fill in information about your medical records. The annual congregational meeting is set for January 27th after the 1030 worship service. On the back of your bulletin, you'll find information about Lutheran Outdoor Ministries in Ohio. They're gearing up for the summer already, and they have events throughout the year also. There's details about those in the calendar for the week and other information in the bulletin also. And one more announcement. Someone passed along to me that Jim Krieger is celebrating a milestone birthday tomorrow. Must be, what, maybe 40 or 50? You know. <laughs> and then we'll begin our worship. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son, that he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the hills in righteousness. Let the and the needy among the people rescue, rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. May he live as long as the sun and moon endure from one generation to another. Let him come down like rain upon the mown field, like showers that water the earth. In his time, may the righteous flourish, and let there be an abundance of peace until the moon shall be no more. And we sing, sing to the king. Discover all 
be the Holy Trinity, one God, the maker of heaven and earth, the word made flesh, the Lord and giver of life. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. God of glory, God of peace. We confess that we have shunned the light that reveals the truth about us. We cling to worldly things rather than sharing the gifts of this world. We trust ourselves above all. Save your people, O oh God. Sustain the rivers and trees that sing your praise. And free us to live boldly in the light and truth of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. The grace of God shines upon us, bringing salvation to the whole world. We are saved. Our sins are washed away, not because of anything we have done, but according to God's mercy in Jesus Christ. Renewed, renewed by the Holy Spirit, let us live in hope and joy. Amen. And we sing again and again. Lord of the manger, Lord of the cross, we gain our freedom with the life that you lost. You lived among us, our Savior and friend, and we pray.
continue with our next song offering. The sun cannot compare to the glory of your love. There is no shadow in your And if the ushers will come forward, we'll have our offering. Special music this morning is by Heather DeJong.
times do I have to tell you, don't put good people on right in front of the sermon? <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Heather, how old are you? You're an incredibly talented young woman. Thank you. The word comes to us this day from Matthew, the second chapter. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed its star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that had been seen at, they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the, saw the star that the, goodness, when they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Here ends the reading. Let us pray. Gracious God, help us this day to turn from the distractions and the busyness of our lives, to focus solely upon your holy word and what you would have us here this day. Grant us your grace, dear Lord, as we worship so that we are transformed by your holy love. In your gracious name we pray. Amen. Well, it's kind of the official end of Christmas here. This is January 6th, and it is the festival of the Epiphany, and seldom do we get a January 6th festival of the Epiphany on a Sunday, and so it's kind of a unique opportunity for us to hear some lessons that we may not hear very often. Now, I'm going to test your memories. How many of you remember J.B. Robinson Jewelers in the Mall? Anybody remember that place, you know? Okay. Well, they closed, of course, some time ago, along with too many other stores, if you ask my opinion. This jewelry store, along with King's and K's Jewelers, was tucked in among many other merchants. Everything from a sandwich shop to a shoe store to a gamer store. Now, for us folks here in Marion, Ohio, who are used to what malls have to offer, there's no surprise about that. I mean, a jewelry store stuck, to, stuck in there next to a shoe store, no big deal. But if you think about it from God's point of view, well, that's a perfect location for a jewelry store. It's a lo location that speaks an important theological message about life. It's telling us that the treasure of life is found right alongside everyday things like sandwiches and shoes. And how very, very true that is. The treasures of life are found right along the ordinary things. We tend to be practical down-to-earth people in Marion County. Diamond rings and, and golden necklaces are wonderful and nice, but ask any thoughtful resident and he or she will tell you that the true value of such things is found in the love and the sacrifice they represent. Remember, ladies, it is the thought that counts. Good, good. So on this festival of the Epiphany, as you and I listen to a gospel passage that tells of wondrous and expensive gifts placed at the feet of the Holy Family, most of us, I think, are apt to judge the value of this gifts not by their beauty alone, but by the love they represent. So what sort of gold do you and I bring to honor our king? What sort of gold do you and I bring to honor our king? And I'm not talking about the offering in your offering envelope. Oh, I, I could. I mean, is our offering reflective of our thankfulness to God for all that God has done? Well, only you can answer that question, so I'm not planning to go there today. When I ask, what sort of gold do you and I bring to honor the king? I'm referring to the offering of our lives. Is it a gold quality life that you bring to honor the king? I mean, isn't that why we're here? 
We're here to make an offering of our life to God. And being sensible, practical Ohioans, we want to offer something that means something. In the words of we three kings, it's gold we bring to honor the king. But how do you do that? Just how do you go about choosing the right ring or the flawless diamond or the perfect gem? How can we expect to offer a suitable gift to the Lord our God here at worship today? Well, hold that thought for a minute and go with me back to J.B. Robinson Jewelers. On the last day of 2012, still groggy from a 10-hour non-stop drive from North Carolina, I had to run some errands. And I mean to tell you, this town was popping. There were people all over the place. I don't know if they were trying to get last-minute shopping in, saying it doesn't last long or something. I don't know what they were trying to do, but they were busy. Stores were busy, and I'm standing in line at one of these stores, and I was struck up a conversation with a woman who used to work at Robinson's Jewelers in the mall, and her name is Judy. She only worked at Robinson's for a scant five months before they closed, but she still had a great story to tell. She remembered a young man who came into the store. He asked to see their selection of engagement rings. Well, he ended up staying at the store for quite some time. He studied every ring in the store. He weighed each one in his hand, held each ring up to the light. He spent hours in that store just looking at the rings, literally hours. Ed Fetter tells me he did the same thing when he became engaged to Ardeth. He spent hours in that store looking for the perfect ring to reflect. Was it you that said, I don't know. I blurted out to this Judy that, well, of course he did. It was an important decision. Judy agreed, but she said when he wrote the check and signed it, his hand shook. His hand shook. And I said, well, no wonder it shook. That was a lot of money. Spoken like a true man, wasn't it? Judy gave a look to me like I just stepped on her foot. You know, that look of pain and dismay all at once, and she responded politely. Why, I don't think that was what it was about. He was in love. What a great story. What a blessing that is for us. To know a love so deep that it makes your hands shake. Think about it for a minute. When was the last time you felt about like that? The young man in our story obviously spent time with his choice of a mate. Obviously, he learned her favorite color. He learned what she liked to eat. He learned her moments of joy and sadness. He discovered what made her pulse rate quicken. He enjoyed seeing the world through her eyes, anxious to show her the things he knew and anxious to learn the things that she knew. He reveled in the surprises that such a love can bring. But perhaps most of all, he knew that she loved him too, and that a little piece of him would just die if he didn't do everything he could to hold on to that love so that love could grow. In short, he lived in stark thankfulness that there was at least one other person out there who cared for him and would stand by him through thick or thin. There is another out there who cares for you and will stand by you through thick or thin. And I'm not talking about a mate. I'm talking about Jesus. The invitation is clear. God invites us to love God as he loves us. And while we'll probably never know God's favorite color, if he has one, we'll never know what he likes to eat if he eats at all. Still, still, we can remember that there is that one who will set aside all for us. Now to fully revel in that love, to truly appreciate that love, we're going to have to spend time with the beloved just as that young man spent time with his beloved. And I know I say this stuff, Kevin says this stuff from this pulpit constantly, it seems, but it's no less true, and it's because it's so true that we say it. We spend time with the beloved through our study of Scripture. For the word of God is a living word, revealing the eternal mystery of God, a word that deserves our utmost attention. I've been preaching for over 30 years, and every three years the same lessons come up. And I can honestly say they're always new, not because I'm special, but because they're the living word of God. We spend time with Jesus. 
through our devotions as we listen and respond to the beloved in heartfelt, honest devotion. We spend time with the beloved through our worship, such as we are doing today, as God dialogues with us at his, with his holy body, us his holy body, and strengthens us for the journey ahead, strengthens us perhaps the next hour ahead. We spend time with our beloved through our service to one another. We see Jesus in the face of our neighbor, and we extend the deep compassion of Jesus to a weary world, and we will see changes occur because the Holy Spirit will see to it. On this festival day, when we reach out to receive the body of Christ, as we reach out as the body of Christ, will our hands sweet, sweat in anticipation? Might our hands be shaking a bit at the thought of the love we have been given? Could we feel that way again? Yes. And if so, what a gift that would be, the gift to honor the king. Amen. And again, I say, amen. Please stand for prayer. Let us pray for the church, the earth, and all those in need. In the name of Jesus Christ, who was born in a manger, died on a cross, and rose from the grave. God, our true light, we pray for the great company of the baptized. Lift up our eyes so that we see the brightness of your rising. Today we pray especially for the leaders and congregation of Christ Lutheran Church in Continental. God, our shepherd, we pray for the earth, for rain in areas affected by drought, for sun in flooded lands, and for peace in places suffering from natural disasters. God, our guide, we pray for all nations and their rulers, for merchants and school teachers, for victims of human trafficking, for relief organizations, and for the poor. God, our bread, we pray for those who are hungry and cold today, for the mentally ill and physically disabled, for those far from home and those without homes. And we pray for the sick. This morning, we pray especially for Sandy Pelfrey, Ron Landefeld, Natalie Walker, Alexander Simpson, Sherry Field, Lisa Krieger, Michelle Cole, Beulah Owens, Marguerite Schwaterer, John Anspaugh, Michelle Cole, Darla Tack, Emma Wilson, Julie Hoke, John Millizer, Marsha Wall, Arthur Cockrell, Susan Kielmeyer, Jeff Longberry, Bob Pugh, Sharon Schenk, Barbara Ryder, Velda Hoffman, Alvina Kelly, Dorothy Simmons, Marge Height, Meredith Andrews, Emma Wilson, Bud Lawhead, Melissa Green, Monica Rawl, Roberta Fitzpatrick, Pat Owens, Larry Ishida, Ruth Wolf, Beverly Lama, Judy Lowry, Polly Matthews, Betty Cockrell, Ellen Cates, William Williams, Donna Queen. We ask for your blessings upon the family and friends of Charles Lewis. We pray for those in care facilities, those bound at home and all their caregivers. 
We ask for your blessings upon the military. And we pray for all others whose names we place before you today. God, our treasure, we pray for this congregation, for the consul and musicians, for the Alder Guild and those who care for our building, for the office staff and the daycare workers, for our education and outreach ministries. God, our bright morning star, we thank you for the saints who have made their final journey home to you. Give strength to us who have here no lasting city. O oh God, who shines light into darkness, receive these prayers and the prayers of our hearts through the power of the Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the love of God bless you and keep you. The peace of Jesus Christ take root in your hearts, and the Holy Spirit bring hopes and dreams to reality in your lives. And we close this morning with Shine, Jesus, Shine. Shine on me, shine.